now a quick tour of the IDE. You're going to see the new look and feel of Visual Studio 2012. You'll notice that there's less chrome, less lines, and your focus is going to be primarily on code while you're working in your environment. You'll also notice a minimized toolbar. So let's go take a look at these new features. So this is the new Visual Studio IDE. Here you can see that there's much less Chrome. That means less lines, less windows to look at. Most things are automatically minimized. Including the toolbar, you can notice that the toolbar only has a few items on it. In previous versions of Visual Studio, this toolbar would be much longer than that, and there would be multiple toolbars. You still have all of your menus as you expected them to be there from previous versions. But see the icons? They're not really colorized. You only have colorization in a few icons that you need. For example, the Start menu that runs your program and says Go. And then sometimes over here you might get a little bit of green showing you uh, what's going on there. One of the nice features of the new IDE is if you select a file over here, you get a preview window. It doesn't fill up your entire gutter with uh, new tabs and you can flip back and forth. If you want to edit a file, you can double click right here and it comes up. You see your blue tabs, everything's minimized. You can slide out windows by just clicking on them. You can pin them by clicking the the pin button and you can unpin them so that they move away all of your windows you can find by going to the view menu and here you can uh, open up anything that you need for example uh, what if I want to find the toolbox here I'll close it and then I'll go to view and then I'll open it right there I have it again so it, that was the view menu let's do a really quick uh, review of some of these items this is your typical file menu that uh, where you can say new project and you can open a new project here and you have other things related to projects and solutions. Your edit menu is a typical edit menu where you have copy paste and so on. View we talked about. Your project menu, we're going to talk about projects in a minute, but it allows you to open and close projects and uh, work with them and so on. Your build menu allows you to compile and build the applications. You have a debugger menu that allows you to get to debug operations. And a team menu so that if you have Visual Studio Ultimate installed or a team system, then you can get to those features right there. A SQL so that you can work with SQL databases. The tools menu will help you get to all types of things that help you configure the IDE. You have a full testing suite uh, available with Visual Studio via the test menu. Your analysis is for high-level analysis, performance analysis, and so on. You can perform window management via the window management, and of course the help is the typical help menu. That's been a really quick introduction. Now we're going to learn about finding and setting options, which is very important for being able to configure Visual Studio the way you want it to work for you. To get started, you select Tools, Options. There are literally hundreds of settings, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few, but once I show you, you'll know how to get in there and work with it. You can set Environment Settings, Projects, and Text Editor Settings. These are just a few of the many options that are available to you. There are more. I'm also going to show you a new feature of Visual Studio 2012 that allows you to change color themes. To set options, go to the Tools menu, then scroll down to the bottom where it says Options and select that. This is the Options box. Here you can see the Environment Settings. You can set Fonts and Colors, which is always handy. Import and Export Settings, where you can save all of the settings you make and then pull them back into Visual Studio later. Down here we have options for projects and solutions where you can set up library paths. 
source control option so you can work with Visual Studio Team Foundation Server and other source control providers. One place you'll really be interested in is the text editor and the C-sharp options where you can control things like tabs. There are advanced settings also. Formatting and in formatting you can also control things like indentations where curly braces appear and more and there's IntelliSense settings also. Looking down at the rest of the options you have options for setting debugger, settings, database, HTML designer for working with web applications, SQL Server, Windows Forms, or if you want to work with workflow. In addition to all of the settings that you see in the options box, third-party tools will often put settings in here for you too when they install. Now I want to show you a new feature of Visual Studio 2012 where you can set a color theme. What you've been looking at is the light color theme. We're going to switch this because you have another option now called the dark color theme. I'm going to select dark, click OK, and here you can see what the dark color theme looks like. Again, keeping with the ideas of Visual Studio being minimal chrome, allowing you to focus more on the code where you see your color and your action over here. And that's how you set options in Visual Studio. Now we're going to be able to work with solutions and projects so that you can organize and build your applications. We're going to work with Solution Explorer, which allows you to organize your development artifacts. What those artifacts are are files, folders, and other projects. In addition to projects, projects hold files, folders, and references to other assemblies themselves. Projects produce assemblies, so you have a hierarchical relationship between solutions, projects, and the artifacts inside of the project. Now let's go see a demo. By default, your Solution Explorer will show up on the right-hand side of your screen. One of the things I like to do with these windows is I can move the Solution Explorer to right over here on the right-hand side of the screen where it takes up the whole screen. Then I can manage multiple artifacts right here. But inside of the Solution Explorer, here you can see that there's a solution at the top. and Solution Explorer will only hold one solution at a time. Within the solution, you can add multiple items such as new projects, existing projects. Somebody can give you a project or you can take a project from another solution and include it in this uh, solution. You can add new items which could be a file or any type of artifact you want to manage. But normally, you would grab a solution folder and then put items in that for the solution. But what you're mostly going to work with in solutions are projects. Here we have a project already in this solution. And I've named it a quick tour of the IDE, but you would give it a name that's representative of what you name your project. Within a project, you have things like files, this is a configuration file, which is typical of many .NET applications. You have references. And let me open this. This is a list of assembly references. And if I wanted to add new references, I would right click and add reference. Now this is a new feature of Visual Studio 2012, a performance feature. So count along with me. 1001, I didn't even count to one second until this popped up right away. In previous versions, you would start up Reference Manager and it would actually take a few minutes to pop up. But inside of here, we have .NET Framework assemblies where you can find anything in the .NET Framework to add a reference to. You have references to other projects inside of the same solution. Uh, right here. If there were other projects, they would show up here. 
You can reference COM objects that are registered on your system. You can also browse your file system and create a file reference to a DLL. I'm going to cancel that right now, but that's how you add references. There's also a Properties folder, and this is somewhat of a pseudo folder. I'm going to move this window over so that we can see more of that window. But in the Properties, you can set things like Application Settings, Build Settings, Debug Settings, and even more. Since this is a course on C Sharp, we're not going to cover all of these things, but I'm going to hit a few features that you'll be interested in seeing. This assembly information is where you can set the assembly version, plus you can set some information about the assembly that you're going to create, and this will show up on your file system. Right here, you can select which framework you weren't going to work with. Since this is Visual Studio 2012, it starts out by default with the .NET Framework 4.5. And you can see that there's multiple frameworks there. See this option for Install Other Frameworks? This will take you on the web to the Microsoft site where there are other frameworks that you can install on your system also. Another interesting thing I want to show you is over here on the Build menu you can create conditional compilation symbols. Here, debug and trace are defined for the debug profile. But if I flip this over to another built-in profile, release, you would see that debug is no longer defined. You can create your own configurations by going here to the Configuration Manager and building your own. It's self-explanatory. Over on the Debug tab, what's interesting here is the command line arguments. If you're accustomed to doing console applications that take command line arguments for utilities or whatever, then you can test sending those command line arguments to your application by typing them in here. That's the properties. And that is an introduction to the Solution Explorer. This section is navigating the IDE with Quick Launch, which is a new feature of Visual Studio 2012. Quick Launch makes it easy to dig deep into IDE features. For example, you may go into a menu and search multiple menus, but Quick Launch allows you to navigate there quickly with just a few keystrokes. You can get Quick Launch started by typing Control Q. There are four categories most recently used commands, which are menu commands, options, which can take you to the Tools Options window, and documents that you might want to open. So let's go see how that works. Quick Launch is located right here on the top right-hand corner of the title screen of the toolbar. You can get there by clicking Control Q, and you can see the cursor up there in that box. If you type any word that you're looking for, for example, maybe I want to do Find and Replace. I start typing Find, and in this window, you can see that I've got a most recently used list for anything that's matching what I typed. Here are the menu options that match what I've typed. The Visual Studio Tools options and any open documents that may have uh, the same information in them. All I have to do is I can continue typing that or you can also see the shortcut keys right there. And at this point in time, when I see that, I can hit Control F and I can get my find box up there. I'll close that. And then I'll start using some of these shortcut keys. As soon as you hit the at sign, you can see what the shortcut keys are so you have help. Here's the most recently used. And then I'll type file. And I only get the most recently used file. 
Here I'll try the menu option file and then I only get menu option file and as I type then it uh, filters the list for me. Here I can say file add or, or file open and it will find uh, all of the file open options that might match. Let's look at another option. For example, the options and maybe I'll say that I want to see the general options in the text editor. Another option, for example, what if I want to open the program.cs file? There it is. I can hit enter and I've opened that file. So now you know you can hit at sign MRU, menu, opt, or doc to use the quick menu options.